guys and welcome to another video. So I am here to tell you, um, I opened a grooming salon 2014 and I am going to tell you the five things that I wish that I would have changed, that I could go back and fix. My salon closed in 2020 because I went mobile. I am in my van right now. I much prefer this. I do not regret opening the salon though. I am so glad I did it. Um, it worked really well for me for six years and I just moved on to something that I always saw myself doing. So number five, I'm gonna go from five to number one. So five is I wish that I rented a smaller space. Now the space that I had, it worked very well for me. I had about 1800 square feet, which was kind of inconvenient when I had the tubs in the very back and then my grooming area was in the front. Like, and with like my, when you first walked into my salon, there was a counter going across the whole huge grooming area. All of the grooming tables were up there. So all the grooming went on like in front of the clients, really. I mean, they didn't stay, but checking in and out, um, it made it a little bit difficult with like clients like interrupting the dogs on the table because they don't really know. They talk to the dogs that you're grooming and the dogs are like going insane and it's impossible to groom the dogs while they're talking to them. So I actually put up a sign saying like, please don't talk to our dogs. <laughs> like, you know, you can look, but um, distracting, distracting them was pretty inconvenient sometimes. Sometimes I was okay with it, but like when I was really like kind of rushing to get done and that was, it was a challenge. So running back and forth, like from the grooming area to the tubs, like there were multiple rooms. So it, it made it hard. Like you couldn't leave a dog unattended. So you'd have to put the dog away to tend to the client, stuff like that. Um, and just a bigger space comes with bigger expenses, um, bigger bills to uh, bigger utilities, pretty much. Um, it worked well for me, but I really, I could have made it work better if I were in a small space, because honestly, a lot of the space that was in there, I didn't use. I could have, like, I think I had about three to four groomers, like, all at once, and that was, like, the the most groomers I ever had, but I still could have made it work with a smaller space. So, number four is set, it's not even setting my hours, it's setting my boundaries on my hours. A lot of the times I would kind of, I didn't do this too much. I did this in the beginning some where like I was open Monday through Saturday, nine to five at first. And that was a lot. I mean, working six days, running a business, grooming six days and running a business. I was working every day. Like I didn't have a day off. Um, that I struggled with and I really should have set my hours more realistically in the beginning. And honestly, if I could go back, I would set, um, my hours by appointment only at first, at least because there were times where I'd have like gaps in my days or I had like, you know, two dogs in the morning and then nothing else for the rest of the day. I really don't want to, like, if I had other things to do, I didn't want to have to be there during those hours. So that was something I would 100% change. Now, number three is charge the right prices. So in the beginning, I was trying to get everybody in the door. I was trying to charge less just to get the clientele. But honestly, like that attracted the wrong type of people looking for a deal. I had some great clients that, you know, didn't care about the price like that I charged, whatever. 
but I had a lot of clients that, you know, would call, oh, what do you charge for this? What do you charge for my dog? And I would quote them low and I really, really regretted doing that because the clients that are calling for the cheapest salon typically aren't the clients that you are going to want. So I would do some, I did some discounting, which I kind of regret later. So like, I know that it, I can give you one example where Christmas for groomers goes crazy. You're always busy around the holidays. January and February are slower. So I gave like a 15% off coupon in the month of like January and February, which I thought that it would give people the incentive to come sooner, but it really didn't. Um, and I was just losing out on that money during a slow time. So that's one thing I regret for sure. But, um, and all of these things that I'm saying, like, don't get me wrong, the business still worked really well for me, but there's just some things that if I could go back, I would change. Um, but the right, I felt like I was good at quoting small dogs, uh, like a good price for the small dogs, but the bigger dogs, like I didn't charge near enough. And I knew that and 100%, I wish that I would have figured out how long does a small dog take for me to groom? It's this price. How long compared to a small dog does the big dog take and charge accordingly? And I didn't. Like, the dogs, the bigger dogs were taking twice as long, and I was not charging double. Um, so, yes, that's that's a big thing. And sorry I keep looking down at my phone, but I wrote a list for today. So, number two, I would have been pickier about my clientele. I wouldn't have taken everybody that walked in my door. There is a clientele for every groomer out there. And you can be picky. It is okay to be picky. Because your clientele, they're choosing you for a reason too. So you should choose your clientele for a reason. You don't want to go into your shop and just dread seeing a person or a dog on the schedule. That was a nightmare. I mean, I had that a lot where like, and it's not even necessarily the person's fault. It's just like, they weren't the right fit for me. Their dog gave me too much trouble and I should have, you know, sent it elsewhere where somebody else could work with the dog better than I could. Or, you know, certain grooms that like, I felt like I didn't really like. I prefer doing, you know, these certain types of haircuts and I didn't want to do these. I really should have been pickier from the start. And I think that it is perfectly normal to be picky about your clientele because like I said before, there's a certain clientele for every groomer and a dog that I love grooming and a client that I love, you're not necessarily, you know, another groomer's not necessarily going to like them. That's just it. I mean, everybody has their favorites. Everybody has like their, um, clients that they prefer, the dogs that they prefer. So, and if I would have focused on those people, I would have had a lot less stress in my life. I was very stressed out. Um, I would say not the whole time I had the salon, but there were days where I would pull up to my salon and I wanted to puke because I didn't want to go inside. That's a problem. Um, it was not fun. Uh, so you know, there were times that I really enjoyed my work, but then there were times where I was like, I don't even want to go in that door. And that's, that's not good. And yeah, I wouldn't do that again. So number one, and this is like, I feel like this is the biggest thing that I regret. Number one is I would have changed so many things about how I hired employees. There are a few, I feel like there are a few key, 
a few reason, like a few things about employees that I would have changed. I would have changed my hiring process. I would have been more extensive, I guess. Like I would have had multiple interviews to pick the right person because not everybody is going to be the right fit for your salon, even if they're an, a good experienced groomer. Um, every salon's different and not all groomers will fit in that type of situation. Um, another one was I hired too many employees and I didn't have enough work. That was so stressful. I was trying to get dogs to fill their schedule and I couldn't and you know employees had to look elsewhere um like groomers had to go to different salons um that was hard because I was really busy at the time I hired a groomer and then it kind of died down and I couldn't fill their schedule super stressful so I probably like Honestly, if I could go back, the way I work the best is in a small salon. Honestly, I'm, I'm mobile now and I much prefer this any day. But if I were to go back to a salon, I would have opened a small salon with clientele that I loved, that I charged enough to not take as many dogs because I was like killing myself doing like 12 to 15 dogs a day, which is too many. <laughs> um, and I only would have worked with one assistant and that's different from a bather because yeah, a bather is awesome to have, but a true assistant helps you more like does the bathing brushing. Um, they can do like kind of like the uh, prep work. They can like check in and out. You basically teach them. You're kind of, it's kind of like your right hand, like your sidekick. <laughs> um, and they're so important. They're so important to the business. Um, it just makes it run smoothly and it makes, sometimes they make it run more smooth than I would have like grooming. Um, so just having my right hand person and not having other groomers, not having any, anybody else really would have been ideal. Now I had a couple groomers that were amazing and I loved, but I just know that I did the best when I was the only one grooming and I had an assistant and that was great. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, I would love it if you subscribe to my channel. I upload regularly and I will see you next time. Bye.